I want to, I want to take it back to when you first got your big break. Uh, Mentirosa was, you know, the biggest, was the big hit, you know, that, that introduced you to the world. Tell us about what was going on with, with Mel Amanes just before that hit and, and just kind of how it all came along. Word, yeah, um, I remember um, I was, I had just gotten picked up from Delicious Vinyl Records where we dropped the Mas Pingon record, you can see I'm rocking yep, yep. shirt. Um, and then we put out the, um, we put out the Rhyme Fighter single and it moved some units and it got a good cult following. That's the one we're on the horse, right? The label didn't like the fact that they pumped so much money on it and didn't yield the return. And it's a, it's a trip when you get to where creativity meets corporate interest. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but they didn't yield the return. So they was like, look, Mello, we're going to put out one more single. And if this shit don't hit, we're going to have to drop you. Mm -hmm. And shit like that. Luckily, you know, I think it was in the sun, moon, and stars that for Latino people that somebody was going to break that ground. And it was going to be this record, Mentirosa. And then we put it out on Power 106, they put it on the make it or break it type mm, of thing. Yeah. And in its first week, it beat Janet Jackson, Madonna, the new kids on the block. And that's kind of when we knew that we had something special on our hands because Latinos as a, as a community stood up and got behind the record and they went out and they bought it. They requested the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, they went out and purchased it. And then next thing you know, the phone started ringing for concerts and and shows and stuff like that. And, and what, I gotta give props to my man Paul Rodriguez, the comedian. He was one of the first TV shows that put me on the show. Okay. And that's really when shit really started to pop off. Nice, nice. Who did the beat? That fucking Santana sample is just classic. Who did that? Yeah, uh, that was uh, Tony G. Tony G, okay. Tony G, yeah, who legendary. Produced La Raza for Kid Frost. Okay. Yeah, so Tony G, the mix master for K Day. He, also, he, was not, he was a drummer, a percussionist, and a music producer. So he put it together and he was like, look, don't... The, the most important part about that whole thing was when he said to me, don't come back to the studio until this record is bilingual. It was his idea. Mm. It wasn't my idea. And then <clears throat> the way I created that style was... See, we lived right here. And as you can see, the houses are only divided by a driveway. Well, there was a little kid in that house, because our bathroom was back in the back. Their kitchen matched up with our bathroom, and he said, I could hear him as I, I was sitting out here out front with Be Real, trying to write the song, but nothing was coming. We was having 40s and blunts and shit like that. And I said, I got to use the bathroom, right? So I go in there, and then I heard the little kid, he said to his mom, Ama, I'm going to the liquor store, Orita Vengo. I'll never forget it verbatim. That's what he said. And then my kind of like my Einstein light went on mm -hmm. and I was like, holy shit, that's the style right there. Spanglish, basically. Spanglish. Yeah. If I could do one line in Spanish, one line in English, and then repeat the process, put the rhyming word on the appropriate language, I got the style. Mm. So when I got back to the car, Be Real had wrote the check this out baby part. And then I just the water valve opened up mm. a flow it just tenemos tremendo leo last night you didn't go a la casa de tu tío that all that whole shit just spewed out so who are some of the people that you were torn with and doing shows with back then we did so many different styles because i was a bilingual mc I had a, a record popping in the spanish market and in the top 40 and, and crossover markets as well as well as black music uh market you know, and, and charts. We were doing stuff with anybody from like Celia Cruz, the Beastie Boys, Tribe Called Quest, um, leaders of the new school, Jose Jose, Jose Feliciano, um, Grupo Nietzsche. Uh, all genres, huh? All genres, Damn. it didn't matter. It was like, it was a new frontier. Yeah, tell us what, what uh, how important being on MTV was back then. And I think I think the importance of MTV in places like and, and video shows like The Box. The Box, the planet's only interactive music video channel. The Box, the only channel where you pick what you want to see when you want to see it. The Box, it's easy to use. The box. That really helped catapult me to the next level. Um, I think The Box helped me to get on MTV because The Box 
you had to, the fans had to call and order that. And, and order, if they liked you, they was gonna call and order your video. And I think when the box really bubbled up, MTV saw that and they were like, we gotta have this, this kid on. And that's when I finally met uh, one of my heroes, Fat Five Freddy, and we did Yo! MTV raps. And, and that really just, that just took it to a whole new level. Um, for me, it was very different. Until I met Fat Five Freddy, it was the it was the house not the house music but the um, techno but no nah. it was the freestyle music fans that really accepted me first mm -hmm. and then when it landed on when we landed on Yo MTV Raps that's when the hip hop community got a hold of it you mm -hmm. know what I mean and I think that all those things helped to build what it was mm -hmm. yeah and it didn't matter in what order everything happened. It just mattered that one thing led to another, dominoed into another, dominoed into the next. And that's how you create artists back then. Mm -hmm. Would you say this specific hit, Mentirosa, uh, that most mostly women bought it? Because, I mean, it was so important to hit that market and it seemed like that song was perfect for, for women. Nah, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, I think dudes gravitated to it first mm -hmm. more than the girls. Because I, I remember doing concerts early on and there'd be women hate groups coming with with picket signs oh, shit, and shit, damn. picketing my concerts and shit like, oh, he's he's telling women, you know, this, that, and the third, and he's a misogynist. At first, I was kind of like, like scared, like, bitch, you don't know how hard I work to get on, you know what I mean? And then y'all coming to these concerts and doing all this shit, but it actually, that helped put more steam on everything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, when they would show up in the news and Mellow Man Ace, you know, the concert got, women's groups were out there. It, it just helped it 50, all. Fifty thousand more yeah. sold right there. Right? Fifty thousand more sold, <laughs> and and I, and then women really. Some women was just like, yeah, that's me, and took ownership of mm. it. You know, and they would come out to the concerts and and just love a nigga to death. Yeah, who's the one? Is it Dolores Tucker? Who, she's the one. Was the main one kind of spearheading that thing back then, right? Yeah, Dolores Tucker. Uh. I am here to put the nation on notice that violence perpetuated against women through the music industry in the forms of gangster rap shut and misogynist lyrics will not be tolerated any longer. Then shut the fuck up! Ladies and gentlemen, volume 10. You and Charlie Tuna from J5 were classmates who talked to me about Freestyle Fellowship. I'm, you know, a big fan of the Baker Boys. I, I, I know you guys didn't really, you know, I guess you guys were bumping heads back back then while you were recording that song. Yeah. How did you hear about that? Kind of kicked them out of the fucking studio. I want to apologize to the Baker Boys. Ice Cube visited The Good Life. Saw you perform the song and then kind of switched okay. his style up. Is that true? Well, people don't want to hear, hey, your best, your favorite rapper has been influenced by some niggas that ain't got no paper. That fuck a gorilla line is that reference to Ice Cube. I hang with my dogs, man. A gorilla. Okay, so that, that, you didn't, I didn't expect you to say <laughs> that. <laughs> My name is I used to have a gang since, like, I sold my first dope at nine, man. What do you remember about the starting of your brother and them putting together South Central Cartel? Big Pride couldn't go because Russell Simmons had Big Pride doing remixes for EPMD, LL Cool J, and shit like that. So Russell called back and was like, man, who was that freestyling on the radio? I don't know too many other niggas who signed three deals on Def Jam. The whole integration of what the West Coast did had revitalized Def Jam. I was Big Pride in LV, but Big Pride turned it down. He felt Coolio would have been a better match. I just didn't like the way when my nigga won a Grammy, he ain't say shit about SEC. But how did that song between you and Mozzie come about? Really, the politics? I don't know. Mozzie probably be like, man, fuck that dude. I'm going to straighten this up right now, too. I'm going to keep it one motherfucking way. NWA said fuck the police, but you guys said fuck the FBI. Ladies and gentlemen, Shoestring from the Dayton family. What's up, man? Um, talk to me about what it was like growing up in the 80s in Flint. I am like that all time rate too. Cause they try to say we in the top three, mm. top three of folk, like one of the four cities in America. Yeah, this was Snoop and Dre and all them came with the chronic. 
But in Michigan, we was all selling them and everywhere. So she wanted to know who the fuck is this Dave family selling all these damn tapes. What was it like touring, traveling, performing with the insane clown posse? Did you guys ever have any issues performing, you know, in, in out of town and in, in hoods where gangs were? When we was in Chicago, we had a couple shows that we did where the gangsters disciples just went crazy. Next thing you know, they say it's about six vice lords in there. And they say it's like 20 vice lords in there. And they say it's like 50 vice lords in there. 